there's so much to unpack on, on where we've been this year. And when we all started out in January of 2020, um, I don't think the problems that we're looking at now were on our radar even then, Nolan. Oh, gosh, who could have imagined something like this? Even though we were starting to see what was happening overseas, I don't think anybody believed that it would come to the United States with the ferocity it had, plus the other things that, uh, that we went through this year. This certainly wasn't a healthy election season by any measure. And, you know, plus the racial strife that emerged just as the virus was hitting its peak. It was a lot of challenges for the nation. Politics, pandemic, um, racial disparities, um, all really exploding. And now they are all intertwined, really, when we talk about how we move forward. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we do have to start thinking of these things in terms of uh, how to solve them, how to solve them and how to, how to live and how to live together uh, in, the, in this country. I mean, it's hard not to think sometimes that things are just coming apart and coming apart really fast. Uh, and part of it is because of the confluence of all of these things. I think any one of these things, uh, it would be easier to deal with and to get people to have, um, you know, to see their common interests in, in, in dealing with it. But you put all three of them together and I think uh, it's, it's overwhelming for a lot of people and it's confusing. What are you seeing or seeing specifically that people are confused about how they should react to or then reacting in a totally different way? Are you talking about racial disparities? Are you talking about people dealing with their kids' education? Are we talking about health? Throw all of that in there and then add on top of that this in incredible uh, political divide that, that we had before, right? It's not like people were, were seeing eye to eye before all this happened. Uh, but this year, the politics of this year, the reaction to politics of this year, uh, and, and in particular, the assault on the election results and on black voters at the end of the year really opened up a chasm that, that I, I, I didn't predict. Uh, you know, I knew it would be a, a, an election in which uh, people felt strongly and that you know, if, if, if President Trump lost, he wasn't going to take it well. Um, and this put Michigan smack in the middle of this conversation, Nolan. Yeah, I mean, what happened in, in Michigan has been a little bit absurd. You know, there there uh, obviously n no evidence of widespread fraud, widespread irregularities in Michigan. It's a desperation, Tim. Uh, you've got a lot of mistrust out there, um, On the some of it based on uh, legitimate fears, uh, a, a lot of it being ginned up by uh, folks with, a, with an interest in keeping uh, the process disrupted. But, you know, a lot of people felt the same way four, four years ago with this Russian collusion nonsense and the attempt to undermine the Trump administration before it went in. Let's not pretend this is the first time we've had uh, an election where people refused to accept in practicality the results. Uh, you know, this has been going on. When you, you know, this time you've got a president who is trying to undermine confidence in the, in the election process. Last time you had an administration that used the powers of the government to undermine, undermine its successor. I mean, we've got to, we've got to get back in, in this country to uh, accepting losses and and moving on and working through the process and we're not we've got so, very poor at that. Stephen Stephen do you so, think that that's a fair comparison that Nolan just made no, it's, between it's six, 2016 and now <laughs> it's an outrageous comparison uh, and it's part of the problem right false equivalence uh, no on false the right. equivalence there, it is a false equivalent so here's here's the difference mm -hmm. uh, the allegations about what happened during the 2016 election uh, were investigated by the Justice Department, uh, by an independent prosecutor. Uh, there are 32 convictions that have been uh, achieved in that, in that investigation. People are going to prison uh, uh, because of it. I mean, the, the idea that there was nothing to that or that it was ginned up is absurd. I mean, there was something- well, we now, that, Steve, hold on, we hold on, enough, hold on. Hold we on, now, now have enough investigations and enough reports to know that this was a ginned up investigation based on false information and a lot, lot of people, people going to jail. a lot of people forced into making guilty pleas be, to avoid longer longer sentences so, but the uh, based on 
based on an investigation that was not rooted. It was not based in facts. Okay, no. Let me finish finish what the difference is. You Mm -hmm. could spend the next 10 years investigating the things that Donald Trump and his friends have said about this election Mm -hmm. and not find anything. I mean, there is no evidence of what they're saying. No one would go to jail. No one would plead guilty. I want to bring this a little bit more back into into where we are in Michigan in looking forward in the time that we have left. What are some of the largest concerns that you see on the horizon specifically for for the city of Detroit um, in in 2021? You know, I think our biggest concern in the city of Detroit is whether or not you can repopulate the all those office buildings, restaurants, bars, when this thing's finally over. It's been now, by the time we get to a comfortable place, for a broad reopening and people returning to uh, their off their workplaces, uh, it's going to be a lot of damage done. I think you can add two things to the problems here in Detroit. Uh, one, uh, one is the effect on the people who live here. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Detroit neighborhoods and in Detroit neighborhoods that weren't benefiting from all of the things that have happened downtown. Uh, in the first place. And uh, the need, the level of need over the last nine months has just shot through the roof. I mean, people are really, really hurting. We're going to have real questions about, about leadership in the city to deal with all of these, all of these problems. And I would say leadership uh, in the state as well, as we look to a new term of uh, legislators coming in, in in January, Nolan, who have to tackle a lot of budgetary issues and, and, and so much more. Million dollar deficit now, it'll get worse. We don't have the luxury the federal government has of running a deficit to balance that budget. There's only two ways to do it. You, well, three. You could grow your way out, you can tax your way out, or you could cut spending. And those are, you know, the one you have very little control of. The other two are both very difficult choices. And the other thing that is on my mind and looking in 2021 is education. And I'm really worried about how... Um, how kids either start over, how school districts are dealing with it differently, that, that you're going to see even more disparities between districts and learning coming out of this pandemic. I'd vaccinate teachers first. We got to get these kids back in school. It's not just their learning. You got a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, particularly among teenagers. These kids are suffering. And I would reserve those first vaccines for school teachers. Yeah, I mean, this was a missed opportunity of the year. Uh, we do know how to make schools safe. Uh, We do know how to make sure that in-person learning was possible. We did not do the things that we needed to do to make sure that that was going to be true in every district. Uh, It takes an investment of some resources in some cases. There are, you know, real different uh, abilities across different districts in terms of uh, what they were capable of. Uh, There was not enough planning and organization uh, across districts to make sure that everybody was on the same page and everybody could do the same things. And so we started the semester with a hodgepodge of, of approaches. Uh, Nolan, I think it's value Val, that you brought up the mental health aspect of this, of, of our young people. And I would even say across the board, you know, we have been forever rewired in our brains and how we deal with things and how we deal with crisis. So uh, I'm going to kind of end on a little bit of a different note here. And I want to give each of you an opportunity. Uh, if you were in charge of the state of Michigan here, uh, starting in January 21, what would be the, the three first um, important points or things that you would put at the top of your agenda? Well, reopening the economy. We, we, we've learned a lot about the virus since the, the spring. And these restaurants, a lot of them have put in, uh, invested a lot in making their establishments safe and training their workers. I would put, I would put that on the top of the list. Um, obviously, getting that vaccine out there. And then, you know, I tackle our spending priorities, tackle our budget priorities. Well, my first, I think, if I were the governor, would be that to, to refocus on, on schools. Let's get schools open. Uh, that is <clears throat> something, you know, the CDC is saying uh, we should have all school, we should all have all children going to school and not doing uh, virtual learning. We just have to do it safely, and we know how to do it. The second, of course, is, is uh, prioritizing the vaccinations uh, and, and making sure you know, uh, Mayor Duggan uh, said last week that he's really concerned about how quickly uh, Detroiters, for instance, will be able to be vaccinated. Again, the gaps that exist in our society are playing out in the pandemic. 
uh, we got to make sure that those gaps don't matter. I mean, this is life and death. Uh, and, and the third thing is, uh, I, again, focusing on opening the economy, but doing it safely. We did reopen the economy uh, at the end of the summer, and then we had another surge that, that required uh, a response. We've got to be able to reopen and get enough people to do the things that they're supposed to do so that the disease does not start uh, hospitalizing people. Again, we're at the same level of uh, hospital uh, uh, overruns uh, that we were in the spring. There's no reason that we need to be that way. Uh, you've got to figure out how to have uh, a balance. Well, there's a lot to tackle. And um, maybe in 2021, we'll all sit down within six feet of each other. I'm, I, I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> maybe fall. I'm thinking yeah. fall in <laughs> well, well, we'll have to see, but we will definitely keep it going. Nolan Finley, Stephen Henderson, it's great to see both of you. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry New Christmas. Year. And uh, we will see you in 2021. Yes. Yep.